Caesars Sportsbook is the only sportsbook app with Caesars rewards. That means win or lose, every bet brings you closer to the types of perks only Caesars can offer. Like hotel stays at over 50 iconic destinations, bonus bets, daily profit boosts, tickets to the game, dining, and so much more. Whether you're a new or existing customer, Caesars Sportsbook is always rewarding. Must be 21. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-BETS-OFF. Caesars Sportsbook. Don't just spectate, participate. Jam Podcast. Oh boy. <laughs> I thought you were going to talk. Hello. I thought you were going to talk for sure. I saw you hit the button. Children of the 90s and beyond. And Hello. And beyond. And beyond. How are we? If you're listening, you and you're not you a boy. child of the 90s. <laughs> If you're listening, you're not a child oh of the 90s. Oh, boy! Turn, turn it off right now. Turn it off right now. If you're not a child of the 90s, get out of here. Oh, boy! Oh, boy. Oh, Hi boy. everybody. Welcome. Oh, boy. Welcome mm. to the Decom Descendants podcast. The podcast is taking over, best I can figure, Dan, the United States. The United States, not anywhere else. <laughs> and beyond. And beyond, yes. We have listeners oh, all over boy. the globe. And, oh, boy. Uh, oh, boy. And also, because we're doing a Halloween Christmas-ish movie, we did decorate the studio <laughs> with shamrocks, and I, I want to be clear, that was on purpose. Did the shamrock shake come back this year, or did they just pass? I've never had a shamrock shake. Really? Okay. Well, you're wrong. Never have. Are um, they good? I enjoy them. Really? Is it mint in it? Like, mm-hmm. what's... Okay. But I feel... I mean, I didn't get one this year, and I think McDonald's had a very, sh- like, a shorter window for them, because I had a friend go on St. Patrick's Day to get one, it, and McDonald's was like, it's over. They didn't have it on no. St. Patty's Day? They were like, it's over. And my friend was like, but isn't... But it's St. Patrick's but today's Day. today's the day. It's why we're here. That's why we're here. <laughs> it is December 7th. Can I tell you something? I'm 40 years old. True story. I've never been to a McDonald's where the ice cream machine has been down. 40 years. Oh, I went. A, I, I, oh. It happened to me a it, good bit. And yeah. you know, During I COVID especially. McDonald's, I worked at McDonald's mm-hmm. in high school. It was never down. I've literally never experienced the phenomenon that is apparently happens all the time everywhere, but I, never to me. I watched a very in-depth detail about the machine itself. Yeah, there's a whole conspiracy behind it. It's, I, I it's, to say, le- yeah. it's legit. Yeah. There's something, something shady going on. The here. McDonald's What's, that was right near my college. All the time? A lot. Yeah. Like, we'd go in at night and they'd be like, Sorry, no can do. And I was like, it's now we would right shut here. down the machine and clean it before we closed. We would do that, and maybe somebody would walk in and we'd be like, sorry, but I, I never, never once was it broken. Wow. I don't think it's ever broken. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think so either. I think sometimes I, I think you just don't just, want to. You yes. know? Sometimes yes. you want to know. That's sometimes right. You don't want I to. think right. some of the times that they were cleaning it, and the other times they were just like, especially if you got closer to the close, so they were just like, no. Because you got to clean those things. Doge yeah. now at nineteen, brand. You know what's? It's unbelievable. <laughs> you know what's a notification? You know it's not a conspiracy. <laughs> Big business uh, boy. Dan right. and Aaron is our reviewers. They are not conspiracies. They are real people. We're up to fifty six. Can we make it sixty by next week? Um, <laughs> Jada J thirteen says, as the oldest sibling slash cousin born in two thousand, I've seen almost every single decom up until twenty seventeen. And since so so they went back wow. uh, yeah. a little bit and mm-hmm. watched the first. I, I, mm-hmm. I guess I don't know. Maybe they haven't seen the first ones. But um, and since my friends were all Nickelodeon slash Cartoon Network kids, who was a Cartoon Ugh. Network kid? Get out of here! Uh, very few people my age are interested in talking about them with me. Lucky for me, y'all have a, uh, similar opinions and a good sense of humor when discussing them, giving me a good laugh on my drive home from work every Friday. Thanks, guys. Also, we watch. I mean, you're channel- welcome to talk about decoms with us anytime yeah, anytime, anytime you, want, J13. Yeah. you might need new friends jada j also wants us to know that they uh watch on channel 50 or 250 i don't know i'm gen z and forgot the tv fair the TV works. but also yeah. her the title of her review is healthy balance of nostalgia and reality and you know what that's what we strive for that's before not, we started this podcast we did hours and hours of prep where we were like mm-hmm. how do we balance those you gotta two balance things. it it's a healthy it's, it's a healthy balance um, it does. If you ever are in the studio, this is the only show where it looks like we did show prep because there are notes all over the There's wall. There's notes on the wall. <laughs> on the wall. <laughs> that are starting to become just a hodgepodge beluga uh, of notes uh, for everything. But, but yes. it, it did start as notes for this show. We did think about it. And I yeah. got to be honest with you, I think that the key of having that healthy dose. Uh, that balance, healthy of, balance, yeah, 
of nostalgia and what was the other reality? One? Reality is a good old fashioned drink. Oh, nice transition, Brad. Uh, thank you. Smooth. Aaron, I'm sorry, a uh, delish, <laughs> not yeah, a drink. No it's drink a today. different segment, guys. Mm-hmm. It's not the drink segment. We're not drinking or drinking. Yeah. It's delish. A terrible I, name for coffee. Aaron, although they ha- we have had a good bit of drinks. Yes. Looking at what we have today, I'm not thinking it's a drink, but I don't know what you got in store for us. Aaron, um, what did you bring for delish today? I did think about bringing a drink. Um, okay. And I didn't only because of the hour at which we're filming this. <laughs> we're actually up for the, the launch. This is a 6 a.m. podcast. We've we've gotten up for the we're 6 live. Yeah, we're we, live right now. We normally... Um, it's crazy what happened yesterday. We normally huh? record this in the afternoon. <laughs> and drinking then makes more sense to me. Uh, first, first thing in the morning, wasn't feeling it. But I did think about making a Kentucky Mule. Okay. Ooh. A, throwing a bone to Dan because it's his yeah. favorite drink. Um, and also because the the point of this movie, I, one of the points of this movie is like overcoming your fears. Yeah, um, sure. And I have a fear of ginger beer. <laughs> and oh, oh. oh, what? Time out. <laughs> I know really? things to do. We're up against it. You have a fear? Um, it's one thing to not like ginger beer. You have a fear of ginger beer. Yeah. The one and only time I had it was in a margarita, and I oh, did not. No. Yeah. Oh. I mean, I, 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 it could I, work. But. It did not. No, you, gin, uh, ginger beer, bourbon, you call it a day. Yeah. I love ginger so beer. So that was the only time. Um, mm. Joe Shea, I know you're listening. You Joe had Shea. that margarita as well, and it scarred both of us. And I've been afraid to try ginger beer again. Um, but everyone I know loves it. My and wife loves I, ginger. Oh, it's yeah. the best. She loves it. Uh, so I was like, maybe I'll do a Kentucky Mule and I will conquer my fear of ginger beer. And it kind of comes in a bit of a, a, a cauldron, if you really oh, think yeah, about it. Yeah, that would have so, been a great, a yeah. really a conquer so, your I mean, fear. Yeah. And it's my favorite drink. Instead, we have delicious. Maybe, is that what instead, we have a cookbook in front of us. So yeah. but, uh, really so, lost out here. So maybe at, at a more appropriate time. I'll have Dan make us a Kentucky Mule. We'll take a video, put it on the socials. Done. Um, just not at 9 Chef a.m. Dan. in the morning. <laughs> Chef Dan. So they um, call me. Yeah, always. He's taking over the delicious segment. Yeah. No. Nope. Um, as he and I were talking this morning in show prep, he was telling me how much more free time he has. And I was like... Has this week during spring yeah. break. <laughs> but not- we'll have in the future. Maybe. So he's going to become Chef Dan. Nope. Um, but anyway, I brought a recipe... Which, if you're watching on YouTube, she is holding I'm up. I'm holding it up discussion. if you're watching. And it's just blinded um, by the light, but you can see no, the you cookies can see the really cookie. well. Um, but yeah, cookies it's called the Monster Cookies. cookies. Really yeah. Yeah. Um, Monster Cookies. Mm-hmm. Okay, I yeah. get it. I get so it. That is what the recipe I found. Is it because they're big? Is it because there's a lot going on? I think on? it's because there's a lot going on. Yeah. I think that's why. It looks like an M&M oatmeal. Peanut cookie. butter. Yeah, is yeah. that what it is? Yeah. yeah. yeah I like Not it. mad about that. Uh, it looks really good. So I'll make these and Dan will make a Kentucky mule and we'll post that on the social. Who is this? Yes. Who is this person that's eating the the cookies? Cookie boy. Cookie boy. Not the cookie monster. This is not the reality part of our podcast. Uh, Brand is eating imaginary cookies. I am eating imaginary cookies. That's true. Thank you so much for bringing that delicious recipe. Recipe and picture. (laughs) Uh, I love them both. No, oh, it's making me really happy to Dan, look at. Dan can do the delicious segment next week. Pop tart no, clock is, is is approaching. <laughs> uh, let's take a quick break. We'll come back. We will dive into our movie of the week. Don't don't do it. Look under the bed. We'll be right back uh, here on <laughs> Decom. <Dan> Hallmark. Just, <laughs> no, Dan. Here on Decom. Decom to drink. <laughs> Who invited Dan? I can't say that. Caesars Sportsbook is the only sportsbook app with Caesars rewards. That means win or lose, every bet brings you closer to the types of perks only Caesars can offer. Like hotel stays at over 50 iconic destinations, bonus bets, daily profit boosts, tickets to the game, dining, and so much more. Whether you're a new or existing customer, Caesars Sportsbook is always rewarding. Must be 21. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-BETS-OFF. Caesars Sportsbook. Don't just spectate. Participate. This is a message for anyone with high LDLC or bad cholesterol who has had or is at risk of having a cardiovascular adverse event. Merck is studying an investigational medication to see whether it may help lower the risk of future cardiovascular adverse events. Cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of death worldwide, and in the United States alone, there are over 73 million people living with high LDLC. 
To learn about whether you may qualify, visit CoralReefStudies.com now. Again, that is C-O-R-A-L-R-E-E-F-S-T-U-D-I-E-S dot com. Welcome back to Decom Descendants. We are, this is movie 11? Movie uh, 12. Movie 12. 12. Movie yeah. 12. Yeah. Don't look under the bed. You lucky dog making another appearance in my top 10 this week. It, I thought about it. It's. I'm just kidding. It's not going to do that. I will say this. Number I feel, one? Moving on. Moving on. I feel as though I was lied to because Uh-oh. we started this podcast oh. under the working assumption that I had not seen these movies and between the two of you, you guys were the pros, but... I'm to understand correctly that none of us had seen this movie. <laughs> so we are not descending from no. any sort of knowledge, yeah. prior knowledge what of is, this movie. No. Like, look, at, so like as a nine year old, this movie looked too scary. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't show it to my nine year old right now. Between the two of us thus far, aside from the first two that are kind of in their own yeah. world, we have either one of us has seen it That's or right. we have some sort of vague working memory yes i this yeah. was all new. and can this of was worms all was new. not our fault because disney aired that one time and then and didn't, like, didn't air sure, it. this is a crime we can't put this on again <laughs> so if you missed that first airing like tough tough luck yeah yeah so uh don't look under the bed i guess was the halloween joint for the 1999 uh, season because it came out on october 9th so at least it's seasonal yeah um unlike, Got a little christmas in there too unlike can of worms that came out just know, to scare like all in, of us. Like in just, May. Yeah. Fun May. Just a fun May scare time. Us forever. So uh, we're in Middleburg. Uh, Do we get a, a, a state? They just say Middleburg. Just middle. Just, it's middle. I'm going to assume it's somewhere in Canada. Yeah, probably. <laughs> um, I mean, if you're going by where it was filmed, Utah. But Ooh, Utah. Okay. DCOM really kept uh, uh, Yukon. Uh, Yukon? <laughs> They are the, they are the one seed overall in the bracket, Brand. <laughs> they actually uh, still have a minute. The decom. This High School Musical is also Utah. Utah yeah. yeah, and I feel like this isn't the first Utah we've had so far. So, so yeah. there Salt you Lake go. City, Salt Lake. Shout out, love that city. Beautiful, um, <laughs> Middleburg, a place that I guess apparently, thanks to narration, we we're to believe it's a boring town. Nothing mm-hmm. really happens here, so that makes what happens in this movie. All the more out there because this is a boring town. Nothing happens yeah. here. So the movie kicks off. Everybody is sleeping and they all wake up very suddenly to the alarms and they're all just kind of like, what's happening? They, the parents go and they wake up the kids and they're like, it's time to wake up. And everybody's incredibly tired, more so than normal. And yes, we had everyone seen is yawning and they just, I mean, yeah, just I, I didn't know what was going on at first. I was like, they're all really died. The viewer at home saw clocks going very right. quickly. Yeah. And so uh, dad decides, hey, I it's always set the times to this specific website. I'll go check the website mm-hmm. and see if what's going on. Because the sun's not even out. No yet. one in know. 1999 in that family had a cell phone, which, I mean, which is, I mean, my that was that would have been... A that is a good question about proposition. this. Is how how does I had a cell phone as a t- uh, like that was my first cell phone, nineteen ninety nine. But even let's talk about digital clocks. Like wow. th- every clock, yeah. digital or not. Like my first cell phone was like two thousand seven. Yeah, but you were t- you were nine in two thousand in nineteen ninety nine. So of course you didn't have a cell phone. But do you my, think my dad had a cell phone in like ninety six, ninety seven? So like the fact that no one in that family had a cell phone. That was a little shocking. We didn't have cell phones until the mid two thousands. Your dad didn't have one. Oh no, 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 Lord, no. Oh well, yeah. I mean, you were the youngest of five. That makes a little bit of sense, yeah. I guess. Yeah. We were we were very late to the cell phone. But also, even if that's the case, I still contend that if you wake me up and tell me at seven and it's pitch black outside, I will argue against you. I will just go. <laughs> I would be. literally. I Can't would be, be like, nope. You're wrong. Unless there's an eclipse that I'm not aware of that sprung up on us, it is not. You know those Check sneaky again. eclipse? It's yeah, sneaky. the sneaky yeah. eclipse. The sneaky eclipse. They're not scheduled or they, anything. They, yeah, you, so I'm just, I'm not getting up. I'm not doing it until you prove to me that it is the, the time that you say, and it's just going to take more than one clock. But were digital clocks affected? Uh, about what? With the time. Well, here in this movie. We see all the clocks changing, but if you had like a no, digital... A di- the first one is a digital alarm So clock. would it affect? Would it have affected your cell phone? It would not. The town. cell phone's hooked up to a satellite. The digital clock's just hooked up to a battery yeah. that you okay. set. All right. Okay. Like so that's the, why when he went and internet, checked the satellite, yeah. it was like, it's right. 4.30 in the morning. 4.30. Okay. 
<coughs> so Great. it is. We it's did 4.30. It. We did it. It's Yay. 4 30. So they all go no, back I'm not to sleep. Out of bed. They all go back <laughs> to sleep, and they're just kind of like, this is weird. Um, Francis. Bacon. Francis Bacon. We'll call her Franny. Uh, she is our, our main character. And the next day, Franny and her best friend are walking to school, and they're confused as to why all the dogs are on the roof. Um, well, they find out, Franny finds out that the alarm clocks was not just in her house. Right. It was her friend Joe's house. And town wide. Yes. Town wide. Everyone in town. Everybody in Middleburg. And then all the dogs are on the roof. Um, mm-hmm. And they don't really think much of those two situations and whether or not they're connected. It's just kind of yeah. like, oh, the dogs are on the roof again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, classic. Dogs we, on the green screen We roof. talked about There's it while nothing. watching. If... I randomly woke up three hours before my alarm because all the clocks in town changed. Yeah. And then as I'm walking to school, all the dogs are on the roofs. I am going back home. That's probably like, enough. I'm not going. I'm not continuing to school. Like, yeah. You see one dog on a roof. You're like, all right, well, that's weird. If they're all on the roofs, I think at that yeah. point, you've got to say, we're not, right. we can't do normal. That's right. Yeah. I, I just, the whole neighborhood just. Apparently, yeah. everyone in the neighborhood has a dog. That's right. Um, and then all the dogs were just on the roofs. And I, I just wouldn't. They're I'd be like, you know boys. what? They're all good boys. Though. Take it in personal. They're all good boys and girls. Yes. Um, and huge. The and they all, they they are all phenomenal. They, 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 they are Clifford size. <laughs> Clifford, Clifford the big roof dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they get to school and Franny notices this guy in the distance just staring at her. And she's kind of like, mm, who's that? What's going who's on? Who's that guy staring at me? <laughs> oh my gosh, oh my gosh. staring at me. And her best oh friend gosh. looks and does not see anybody. And she once again is like, all right, all right cool, cool. No, no big deal. Um, we, which, then, we, we are going to find out later that this guy doesn't think anyone can see him, which now does beg the question, why is he staring at her? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that I did not think of when I was watching the movie. Yeah. Why is he t- pulling his sunglasses down and staring at her longer than... Anyone needs to stare at anyone well, else. They I, I don't think know. at that point she had like seen him. He still thinking, doesn't think he can be seen. Though. Right. But I, I think it was more of like a, is she looking is at she me? Looking at me. It's but one of those smiling. Ones. He's not confused. It's a weird bit. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, it is an interesting yeah. performance knowing, it's weird. knowing what it's we weird. know now. Yes. Um, so <laughs> some more stuff he's staring. He's staring at me. Oh my God. Uh, we then see uh, a ton of eggs and, Whatever number you think it is. It's more. Quadruple it, at least. <laughs> so many eggs drop on this car, and it just kind of keeps happening. 40, 50 dozen? Yeah, at least. At so least. you see all the empty egg cartons, and it is it's, it's it's a lot prodigious. of eggs. Yeah. It, is, it is a lot of eggs. <clears throat> the random guy from earlier is just kind of, it keeps lurking. He's like, he and he goes up on the roof, and he sees all the empty yeah. a, uh, egg cartons, and he's like, whoa, this is weird, huh? So he also kind of doesn't know. Doesn't really know right. what's, what's Which happening is here. Also, plot-wise, weird, now that I think of it, that he doesn't. Why else would he be? It's not important. Keep yeah, going, we'll, we'll get there. Yeah. So, after school. I thought a lot about it. I'm with you. <laughs> after school, she's uh, walking home, and she sees the guy again. And this time, she says, why are you following me? Like, why are you following me? And he's like, me? And then a, a school bus drives by and he disappears. Mm. Yes. So uh, what's going on there? We don't know. We do know. Um, <laughs> we then see a ton of more weird things happening. Uh, there's uh, The pool is now jelly. Uh, jello. 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 Uh, which really is just gel- jelly if you think about it. No. no. Okay. Um, water <laughs> is very different. Process. Water's filled up the, the buses. The pool is filled with preserves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the buses are filled, filled with water. With water. water. Uh, there's bees in the principal's office, and it's not no just. I forgot about the the water in the buses. Yeah. yeah. Early Dingus Day. <laughs> um. Y- Early yes. Day. Happy yeah. Dingus Day. Happy Dingus to Day both to you. Of you. Next um, week. To all who celebrate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the. the <laughs> I have a point to make later when we get to the, the to talking about it, but like it, it just the buses. I forgot about that. So do you want me to wait? Do you want me to uh, like? Do you just it's keep weird me up? to I say that you still, have a point you want to make no, later? Just, well, you just when, keep me posted. Put a pin in that for whenever no, Aaron keep, decides when they, when to share. When they blame share. Francis for the pranks, how? how All right, when yeah. Well, we're, yeah, it's already starting to stack how, how Francis could have possibly done all of these steps. I mean, I was out on the pool being filled with with jam 
Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, with Smuckers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's the really buses. The same thing. I forgot about the buses when in the think, water. Uh, like, think about how, it. how did they think that she? I'm just gonna have Let's to give it up think for about this for a while. <laughs> you remember um, when that guy on the Today Show would do the old, Smart. shout out to the old people with the hundred when you turn a yeah, hundred? Yes, I love that. That was great. That was always the highlight of my morning. That um, was always the highlight. Of yeah, my it would happen right before I would go to school. My mom would always watch the Today Show in the morning. He didn't have a cell and, phone. Uh, <laughs> I didn't have a cell phone. <laughs> It's true. And uh, so, yeah, I was pretty pretty jazzed about all these old people. It's just good ben to know. I like, can't wait till I'm 100. Yeah, 100%. That's literally my only desire to live that long. Yeah, is and that's why you're doing a thing. I'm doing a thing. That's why you're doing a thing, to live to 100 to yeah. be on the smuckers. There's a lot. Don't let anyone fool you. There's a lot of downsides to living a long time. Yeah. But the one upside <laughs> is you get to be on the Today Show and the little jam. Do they still so, do it? Yeah, they got to. Al Roker does it now. So who's going to be doing in 2092? Al Roker. Al Roker. Carson has Daly? Be, Carson Daly 100% will be doing it. He's going to be 125. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Doing some Smucker's Request Live over there. <laughs> <laughs> Wake me up. Wake me um, up so he is on the Today Show now. Oh, there you go. Did See, you I know that? that? He's, I like, uh, he's like, so I uh, made that joke. Yeah. And he hosts the, the voice. NBC Smuckers request live. NBC <laughs> bought NBC bought Carson Daly stock really, really low, hi, really high. <laughs> no, because, no, they did, they've had they have a, a late night show. He on? He did year that was yes. when he was still a thing. Yeah, so yeah. they they, they got, bought high. Oh, they bought high, but now he's and now doing he's everything. Low. No, but he's doing everything. He's like he he's always he's in NBC's, my opinion like he wants to be Ryan. Seacrest yeah, he's NBC's he's, Ryan Seacrest, but with like just a lot of melatonin. He's NBC's Ryan Seacrest. Yeah. How old is Carson Daly? Oh, uh, forty four. The fact that you think he's in it, Aaron. How old's Carson Daly? Is he in his fifties? He's fifty. No, <laughs> he's fifty years old. Wow, he looks great. He looks great. He's halfway to getting on a Smuckers. He's halfway, he's halfway, he's to, halfway Smuckersville. to Smuckersville. Request live. And you can submit that via email or fax. Yeah, so. That's right. Halfway yeah, yeah. to Smuckersville. Carson Daly. Um, you can give us, give if anyone knows him, let it, <laughs> let him know that we tip our hat to and him. And that Brian thought he was 44. And I thought he was 44. Really appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he's always so supportive on The Voice, too. He always really wants the I guys. I forgot that, he was on The Voice. I've not watched I, I, I stopped watching The Voice when I Adam s- Levine left. I still kind of love The Voice. Of you were the, watching of, for Adam Levine? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is a good, well, also, this is I, a mean, good I season. started watching for Adam Levine, and then I really loved the, like, bromance between him and Blake Shelton. I mm. like... They, we had, got, they, had, they had some good some good banter. John Legend, Dan and Shay, Chance the Rapper, and Reba. Reba. And whenever oh, Reba, Reba would be good. Whenever somebody picks Reba to... Uh, if she turns and there's, like, a... If, if, if you pick her... Uh, you get chicken. She gives you a, a, a box of, of Reba chicken and a Reba chicken box. Mm. What? Well, Gwen Stefani used to give out jackets. It's, it's it's become a thing that each each like so chance gives chicken? you a chance gives you a chance to wrap her hat. Okay, you know uh, you John Legend that. gives a, a chicken. A, what are you going to do with chicken? You got to eat, eat it, it, and then that's it. it. And you don't see, have anything. In, in the first season she was in, I think she gave out hash browns. You'd go over <laughs> to this like hash brown stand. And she'd scoop it out. <laughs> I just feel like everybody else oh is under it's gosh. swag. Yes. Yeah. She's giving But that's what makes Reba Reba. Different. Reba's gonna Reba. Reba's gonna Can Reba. Can Reba and Kelly not be on the same season? I don't know. Hmm. I don't Kelly Clarkson? Mm-hmm. I don't think she can do it anymore. Because of she's in New York show. Okay. Yes. I think she's too busy now. Well she's she, got when she was in LA show. she did it. But when she's now mm-hmm. she's in New York, she it's not the same. Can't studio. do it. It's yeah. too much. Anyway. I was wondering, are they still friends? So Reba and Kelly? Yeah. I hope so. Why wouldn't they be? Well, Ke- Kelly divorced Reba's son, so I just don't know how that worked out. Oh, I didn't know that they, they were married. Yeah, I think that's I how knew they- she had a divorce, but yeah, I didn't know that that's who she'd married either. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So I just wonder. I mean, they were really good friends. So I wonder how that. Hmm. Well, I'm Team Kelly. Um, oh, for sure. And so I want everyone. <sighs> that's to- tough. I mean, I don't. I mean, maybe in that in that divorce. Oh, in I'm the Team divorce. Kelly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, 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 yeah. Pick between I'm not Kelly talking Reba, about right. No, no, don't no. We would do that. We would never. Okay, I can't. You guys I came out hard like your team, Sorry. Kelly. I'm no, like, I, I just meant in the divorce. In the divorce. Say, team Reba Kelly. McIntyre, national treasure. Right? I love Reba. Yeah. Okay. Reba, 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 Reba. Kelly, if you want to come on, do come to Descendants and break down a decal. Love Kelly. Hey, bud. 
Uh, Where were we? Early on, still in this movie? <laughs> yes. yes. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. So um, that night, Smuckers really took us for a turn there. Yeah. So France, Franny, Francis Bacon, uh, who can with a B, o- is, with a B. who's the only one that can see the guy. She's not the only one that can see the things. Everybody can see the things. And so I do the think, yeah, yeah, the yeah. pranks. I do think that's worth noting that yes. it's not just everything. Not everything's in her mind. It's just. Well, I also question, like, somebody dives into the pool of jello. You should Did be able to see that. See no, you should be able to see it. Red jello? You should be able to see it. Did it? I got to be honest. If your pool, if you can't tell the difference between your pool and jello, jello. that's right. Then you you should probably redo your pool. That's um, right. Do we know anyone with a pool we could try this out with this summer? Mm. Fill it with jello. If you want to pay <laughs> to reline the pool, then we can do it. How much are we talking? <laughs> Um, we just got uh, an Amex card. F- no, not the business. You this, personally. No, this sounds like the you the most business expense of all time. You filling your pool with, with Jello, Jello is the most business. Th- th- that's a business venture. You personally have to repay it. It probably costs you five to eight grand. You you not you thinking that this isn't a business thing is 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 it's shocking. Ruining my kids' time to to swim. They're gonna love swimming. But in we jello. were watching a movie. No, we watched a movie with yeah. the Jello. Figure it out. So you're saying figure it out, or we could break into the Y and do it in their pool. Yeah, that sounds better. So yeah. more like a crime, but I'm in. Yeah. Well, if we want to be more authentic to the that's movie, a lot more it would jello. be the Y. Yeah. That's a lot more Jello. It's a lot more Jello. Um, so that night, everyone's asleep, business and we business. see this person like kind of like limping around, uh, hands with long nails and uh, creepy, creepy hands, and uh, is planting plants. And you're like, oh, that's nice. Just a yeah, uh, a nighttime nighttime gardener. gardener. Yeah. Did you say gardener? Gardening. Oh, can I get that Italian? Can I get that Italian beef with some gardener? Yeah, gardener. I'm a gardener. Who that gardener? Some nighttime gardening. You know, (laughs) who that gonna gardener? The best time for flowers is at nighttime. That's exactly right. And uh, the next day, she meets her best friend outside, and we see that the uh, plants spell. Joe Joe, loves Bert. Joe loves Bert. And And Bert Bert is Francis Bacon's brother. Older brother. And Joe had just told Franny that. She has a crush. Or at least Franny's like, you have a crush on And Joe's like, no, I don't. She's like, don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. Mm -hmm. Uh, So she's mad now. And we're never going to see her. And we don't see see her her again again the rest of the movie. I think we see her once very at the near the end. But basically, you're right. Maybe we don't. Uh, she's very mad. Yeah. <laughs> she's she's about um, 80 minutes worth of mad. <laughs> and so then she gets to school and everybody is just stationary outside. And it is one of the creepier things. It's like, do you remember the movie Smile, uh, Dan? I do. Where you just kind of see, like they would see people and they'd just be smiling, smiling at them yeah. through a crowd. It's kind of like creepy like yes. that. Everyone's just stationary. Like, like, what the heck? Like that. And then the bell rings and everyone, and everyone starts moving in. again. It's like Zach Morris called Time Out. Yeah. I don't know how the Boogeyman School did wide. this one. I, the, every, everything else <laughs> yeah. Yeah, is, not, if the Boogeyman can control time like that, that's that's Or scary. control my, like, that he his his thing is he can control like objects like he can make a pool full of jello he can do all of these things that involve objects but this is causing a group of p this is mind control well i think he just yeah. stopped you think he stopped time. time i don't think he's in their minds i think he stopped time and so when the bell rings interesting okay so that, that would go back to can we, can we talk about the jello for a second but he didn't actually cause time to speed up there he didn't he just sped up the digitals yeah yeah um <laughs> <laughs> the boogeyman we see like Smuggers physically <laughs> planting the flowers like we see yeah. all of that so am I to imagine that the boogeyman took over a kitchen somewhere and was just slaving away making some jello <laughs> jello like how did I have so many questions yeah. about That's the jello true. I'm so sorry I cannot let this go yeah. there's a lot how did here. the jello there's get in the pool here. filling up the buses with water like, you get a, just, there's oh, is that bus airtight yeah <laughs> like yeah, because you does guys, the boogeyman how, have magic? Yeah, how much of what the boogeyman is doing is magic versus correct? Just because like being, you would think that the boogeyman could put, just like snap his fingers and he's spoiler, spoiler alert, later he's on the roof putting up Christmas. Lights. That's right. Yeah. So like he does have to do the things. That's right. Yeah. Yes, but then there is some magic. He involved. loves a good prank. He the does boogeyman co- loves a good prank. He does cause everyone. Well, yeah, maybe the boogeyman convinced like has said, "Hey, let's." got everybody involved in the stationary bit like hey guys let's all do this thing you guys want to do a thing and freeze well, <laughs> it's a freeze, a boy. freeze boy freeze boy i don't know 
These are good, these are good questions. <laughs> I have so many questions. If yeah. we could get the boogeyman, if you could come on the pod, uh, we have some questions. Um, all of the lockers have the letter B spray painted on them. Is it for bacon? Is it for boogie? Who can say? Um, except for we Francis can Bacon. Say unequivocally, it is bo- the boogie. boogie. Yes. But at the time, we don't. The know. fact that Francis Bacon's locker right. is the only one without the B on it. Oof. People are a little mm-hmm. like people are thinking that it's her. So That's she goes. When they're like she's doing all these pranks. She's, yeah. she's a big she's pranker. pranker. She's big a pranker. pranker. Yes. Yep. She goes, uh, she's at lunch and she sees the guy lurking again. So she goes to talk to him. And this time he doesn't disappear. He doesn't run away. He says his name is Larry Houdini. Um, and he uh, knows who has been doing all this stuff. The boogeyman. Mm-hmm. The boogeyman's been doing all this stuff. And uh, she's like, why can I only I see you what what is happening she's like hey everybody Larry Houdini and no one everyone's just kind of so laughs she makes at herself him. look more crazy yes. also to note you may have said this but she is an eighth grader in ninth grade that's so true she's trying to fit in already she's trying it's she's awkward trying. for her anyway they already think mm-hmm. she's weird and then now they think she's weirder right yes yeah because she's pranking everyone and she's just shouting right. to herself in the yes. cafeteria yes so the school begins to question her um, because people are beginning to think that she's the pranker and mm-hmm. she tells them that uh, Larry Houdini did it. It's Larry Houdini. Larry who done it. It's Houdini, and uh, no one believes her. Obviously, because Larry Houdini doesn't go to school here. We got no record yeah. of this Houdini. Um, but the um, the school therapist, what, what are the guidance, counselor, guidance counselor, yes. um, has a working theory. Apparently, uh, uh, Francis Bacon's youngest brother uh, had needed a bone marrow transplant. Plant. Correct. Okay. You got man. You were you, you made it through. It. You made it through. It. You know I struggle. Pussy willow. <laughs> you know I struggle with when I make a mistake and I correct it in my mind. Then I'm constantly yeah yeah. yeah. It, it's a bone marrow transfer. Transfer is what I thought. <laughs> Transplant. Has to, he code switches when he talks from his head to real English. <laughs> Yeah, man. In my head, it's, it's that's a better joke than it's yeah. getting credit for. Um, <laughs> so, um, so people in Brand's brain is yeah. pulling out. <laughs> this is what we want to say. This well, is what it looks seen, like in my brain. Switch it. <laughs> you've seen the episode of SpongeBob where they go inside his brain, and that yeah. is his brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Dan has two, so you get that. Oh yeah, no, of course. Big SpongeBob SquarePants guy, Krabby his brain, Patties, his pizza, brain is the whole thing. Crusty and crab like, pizza is the oh, pizza. pizza. For you and me, Krusty Krab. So there's a point after that where the guidance counselor puts a, a cool bag on Francis's head. Oh, I'm sorry. I was getting to the working theory. Oh, sorry. The oh, theory, theory the, the is, transfer. yes, and that her brother, her older brother, Bert. So a two-hour episode. Or, yeah. Bert was able to give the bone marrow. So the, the theory was that Frances had given the bone marrow to her younger brother and now she was acting out because He's she, getting was, she was forced to like right. do this yes. thing. Um, but then it turns out that it wasn't Frances at yeah, all. It was no, Bert, she so. couldn't give the bone marrow. She wasn't a match. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's a match. And then she lays down on the be- on the uh, the church pew out there <laughs> with a with a with an ice pack on her head and has what I can only describe as the creepiest scene in DCOM history that happens after that. What happens then? The bo- we see a hand, Freddy Krueger style hand, long fingernails coming up over the edge of the the pew and reaching down yeah. Yeah. Over her face, it is terrifying. There's like some uh, fog machines. It is terrifying. Do the lights and, dim? Do the yes. Yeah. She wakes up. She screams. It's terrifying. Like things are happening, Brand. Right. Mm-hmm. So uh, she comes home, and at this point, her youngest brother comes in and asks about whether or not the boogeyman is real. And she's like, "Why are you asking?" And it's like, "Oh, so, well, Larry Houdini at the park." You know, told us that the boogie boogeyman was real, and so she goes to the park, and sure enough, Larry Houdini's at the park, shooting hoops. Basketball is his favorite sport. He likes the way they dribble up, up and, and down, down the, the court. court. His favorite play is the alley oop. He likes to pick and roll. He likes to give and go, and so uh, she goes to the park. He's there, and he explains that he's an imaginary friend, and that kids can see him. Kids can see everything, and so every kid, best to my knowledge, best to can, my knowledge, can see. Larry Houdini, 
Mm-hmm. And can they see every imaginary friend? We don't really get into Not important. all the specifics here. The here. <laughs> but they go to the library, and he begins to prove that every that kids can see him he's doing faith of a child. tricks he's doing yes. somersaults yeah. and on do you tables want to talk about those kids for a hot second oh my god well they're, they're by themselves they're uh, like they are glued they're, How i they? don't know if this was a thing in 99 where you drop your kid off at a library uh you'd put him at a table with a tv that says story time there's a max of six and that are allowed. somebody somebody has recorded a video of, of them, them reading, reading a, story. a story so that no one yeah. has to... I mean, my library had story time growing right, up. but with an actual with person. This, with yeah. an actual... Like, like a library. librarian Adult would supervision. read. Yes. And my parents also stayed. Like, yeah. it wasn't yeah. a drop-off a situation. No. Um, so that was just... I didn't know what was going on in 99 in Middleburg, but uh, yeah. apparently they don't your four-year-olds did and not need adults unattended in front of a TV in the library. Yes. so And uh, he grabs a book uh, about the boogeyman mm-hmm. and uh, is going to try to figure out how to make this boogeyman go away. Yes. That's the whole thing here. So they go back to her house and it becomes clear that uh, her brother can now no longer see Larry Houdini. Mm-hmm. And this really upsets Larry. Yeah, because, turns out ahead. Larry was Darwin's imaginary friend. Yes. And so um, he's upset because she basically told him that he has to grow up or something like something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, this really upsets Larry. And so that night, Larry is watching Darwin as he sleeps. As you do. And, um, Above board. And he hears the boogeyman on the roof. The row is such a clatter. And um, he sprung from his bed to see what was the matter. Oh, my God. We're never. <laughs> We're having a good time. So we're having a great time. It's the Rose such a clatter coming. <laughs> and so uh, Larry uh, goes outside. Francis also wakes up and comes out to help this him. This is going to be our longest episode. Boogie- ever. Here we go. Boogeyman <laughs> is up on the roof. and uh, he's, he's trying put, to put up some Christmas put up, lights. Putting up Christmas lights. That's right. As you do. He's a he's a pranker, but like a Holly Jolly yes. fellow. Yes, he's a it's a reverse a Holly Grinch. Jolly pranks. It's a reverse Grinch. Yeah. It's a reverse Grinch situation. And um, Larry gets up on the roof <clears throat> and gets scared of the boogeyman after finding out that he is now also going to become a boogeyman. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's that causes starting him to, to begin see to, some purple eyes, some yes. things here and there. And he uh, begins to fall off the roof. The boogeyman turns on the Christmas lights, which causes the rest of the town's lights to fall to, to not fall off to to turn off, and which becomes newsworthy the next day. There was one Franny house also in town breaks the glass. Yes, yeah. so yeah. Franny tries to save Larry. With the ladder breaks the glass. Um, Paris wake a ladder up. Company. They think that Francis has done all this, and she cray. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everyone in town thinks that Francis caused a citywide blackout right. by decorating for Christmas in whatever month this is. In October, which could happen. It should be against the law. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> uh, so Larry <clears throat> shows up the next day. You heard it here first. Bran agrees you Brand shouldn't agrees. decorate in October. You shouldn't decorate in October. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Uh, so Larry shows up the next day and tells Francis that they need to read more of the book and they need to create some boogie goo. And while this is happening, Franny's dad, played by the venerable Stephen Toblowski, wants to have the guidance counselor over for dinner. Yes. I, think, I think that's what would solve this, is if you had the, the guidance counselor over for dinner, then yeah. we could get to the bottom of this. We couldn't do that in an office, but if we cook him a meal here, I think we're going to solve a lot right. of problems. So... Darwin's in there making the boogie goo. She walks in and she Larry see- is Larry. Sorry, Larry. Darwin Larry, is Larry. a child. Yeah, because yeah. Larry's you can't see Larry anymore. Larry's very into boogie goo, and she's like, "That's weird. Like, why are you like sucking sucking on a chili dog? <laughs> sucking on <a> chili dog." <laughs> Sucking on a chili dog. Sucking on a chili, chili dog. dog. Yeah, and if you have not seen this movie, this is a scene in which. I almost threw up. Yeah, yeah it is tough. It the, is a, the a, bubbling sound yes. effect. Yeah. I think is what puts mm-hmm. it over the top. Yes. Yeah. Because I was thinking about this last night as I went home and was just <laughs> continuing to process this movie. There is a scene in Can of Worms where if you turn the sound off, I still want to throw up. But if I turned the sound off during this scene, I would yeah. have been fine. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah it yeah. was that bubbling Accurate. sound. Like I just, I didn't like it. It was tough. So. Uh, also, think wearing headphones didn't help. Yeah, yeah, it was right there in the old ear canal. Um, so she begins. She reads that once somebody stops believing in an imaginary friend too soon, 
that person, that imaginary friend will become a boogeyman. Ooh. There are multiple boogeymen. Yeah. And so she's now like, oh, he's eating the the boogie goo. He's His turning eyes are purple. Uh, yeah, he's turning into He the scratches boogeyman. her with long fingernails. Yes. So Darwin steps on some boogie goo that was on the ground and yes. it is now on his shoe. He goes to his room. He's sitting on his bed, feet he dangled is, over. He's in Francis's room. Yes. And uh, the boogeyman. Francis is in his room and kicks him out of his room. So he yes. goes to Francis's room. His, uh, the, know, the boogie, <laughs> like you do. we see the boogeyman's hand grab his foot. Mm-hmm. Yep. And he is now pulled. See a sucker. He's been boogied. He's been boogied. <laughs> he's been boogied. He's been boogied. You got boogied. Yeah. So uh, Larry and Franny now go into the room. They see that his shoe has been left behind. Mm-hmm. Kirk Rapture. <laughs> and <laughs> Nicholas Cage. Ooh. And uh, so she looks under the bed. I know we've, we've you been said told. Don't. We'd say, we've been yes. told not to, we'd but what can you do? To. And uh, she sees a portal of sorts Oof. that is open mm. so she goes through larry is also coming with and he has with him a machine mm-hmm. that z- zaps zaps them real good I'm kind of foggy on the machine <laughs> yeah to be honest yes. with you it's real. Uh, a backpack and it's there's a, a whole it's a good it's a, it's a going thing happening i i think they were going for like, like jumper a, cables that you're supposed <clears throat> to attach to the boogeyman and it's really dangerous but also for kids at the same time i, I don't, like it's a lot i think they were going for like a ghostbusters thing sure there, but i don't know sure. anyway we go into boogie town and it is <laughs> you're you under too. the bed and so Every Boogie everything town. that you would see kind of under a bed, like it's all there. those random things, are massive. massive. So yeah. like a toy car is huge, and uh, a yeah. sandwich huge. It's like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, but on a cheaper budget. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So they're trying to uh, Larry and Franny are trying to track down uh, where Darwin is mm-hmm. and Boogie, of course. And so they keep they're going, they're going, they're going. They're fine. Boogie, uh, uh, Darwin is in a sack. Yep. <laughs> he's in a sack. What's he's funny about it? He's in a sack. It's a sheet sack. It's a sheet he's sack. in a sack. Yeah, it's a sock. It's, it's a giant sock sack. <laughs> yeah, it's a giant sock sack. And so uh, he's they, trapped in a sock sack. Yes, trapped in a sock sack. Wasn't me. And so uh, Larry goes to shoot Boogie yeah. with the bazooka. And before we get too much further, we <laughs> should we should bring up that the boogeyman is a Victorian. Man who speaks in rhyming couplets. Yes. yes. So. No. I, I, it's crazy that we've gone what three sorry. hours into this pod and we've not we've not covered that yet. That the boogeyman only, only speaks in rhymes. rhymes. Yes. For a guy that has lost his way when it comes to hygiene and, and I would most just, everything else, he still has his rhyming couplets. And I would just say, don't ask. Yes. This is a yeah. classic don't ask, don't tell situation when it comes to the rhyming. We don't need to get into it. Um, have you heard about the boogeyman? Real quick, guys. I have actually heard a rumor. That God is bigger than the book. What? Yeah. But what about Godzilla? He's bigger than Godzilla what? and no. the other various monsters that you'll find on, on your TV? television set. Yep. No way. God is bigger than the boogeyman. No, I don't believe you. Well, well he's, he's watching, watching out, out for you, you and, and me. me. <laughs> so uh, he goes to zap him with the zap gun, and it's not working. Like all playing... the monsters on TV? Yeah, all of them. We should be playing Decom Descendants Bingo. Son of a B. <laughs> Did we bring up VeggieTales, Jack? <laughs> the the VeggieTales podcast is going to slap. Did we bring up? It's going to slap. Do I, do, silly Songs and want, Larry I, podcast? Uh, I don't want any... I, I don't know if I want any part of that podcast. <laughs> I think VeggieTales is vastly o- overrated. I like a cheeseburger. But I like like a milkshake as well. Where's my hairbrush? Well. It's like classic. <laughs> said to her, I can't give you either. And he I said, said, isn't this burger bell? She, she said, said, yes, it is, but we're closed now. But we open tomorrow at 10. Said, I am extremely hungry. But I guess I can wait until then. Because yours is cheeseburger. And I say cheeseburger. Can't wait for you. Yeah, can't wait for you. Oh, it's precious. <laughs> Remember, remember four hours ago when Dan said he didn't want to be a part of a veggie <laughs> Listen, because I sing along doesn't mean I like it. I, I, if you play a song, I will sing along. If I know the words, oh, if I don't. Why do you know that song? 
the the early silly songs were played in youth group. So like when I was in high mm. school, hairbrush, cheeseburger, um, lips. Nope. Uh, <laughs> hairbrush, cheeseburger. There's one other big one. Water buffalo. Uh, water buffalo. Water buffalo. Yeah. Those. Water buffalo. Water, 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 water no, buffalo. Everyone's got a water everybody's buffalo. Everybody's got a water buffalo. Mine, mine is, is slow. slow. That's right. Everybody's got a those, water buffalo. Those three. Uh, Where did we get them? I don't know. <laughs> Those three are are etched in my brain. They slap, mm-hmm. and I think they're terrible. <laughs> you do not think cheeseburgers terrible? I do. <laughs> I do think it's terrible. Well, there's the whole. Have you heard about like what everyone now thinks the cheeseburger song's about? No. Oh. I do think it's weird that Phil Vischer and his gang decided to do a a, a Mexican ish voice <laughs> in that song. Uh, I think that is weird. It's a weird choice. Uh, why? Why? Listen, man, we're all growing. We're all we're all growing. <laughs> we're all growing. And I think Phil Vischer would admit that. <laughs> but I and, I, he, and he got screwed out of his VeggieTales money. He and did. We hate that for Phil. But I, I just VeggieTales in general. I what don't. What's the cheeseburgers? I don't like. Yeah, I know. Oh, every there, word. there are theories that it, it's it's about oh. like virginity. Oh, what? The, what? <laughs> How like you have to wait? <laughs> You have to wait till tomorrow at 10 a.m. to know. have sex? I don't know. I Your do birthday. not remember this one. This is not one of, like, then what's the classic Denny's? I think that's a stretch. I don't know. I don't know. It, what's going to Denny's for the for the Grand Slam? What's that? I don't know. Is that I think it's a non-sexual stretch. pleasure? <laughs> it's all out. It's all. We're uh, getting really in the weeds if the burger's virginity. Listen, I'm just man. saying. I don't think it holds up. It's all outside the pants stuff. <laughs> It's a yeah, it's uh, it's outside the pants stuff. Yeah, man. It's Denny's a uh, Denny's Grand Slam is your pa- is pants on. Yeah, like there's this whole whole thing. One no. one weirdo on Reddit doesn't make it so. Well, the first the first the first comments from professional squid, which I'm here for this, is on the other hand, he does eventually settle for a cheap breakfast at Denny's. Make of that what you will. Is Denny's a hooker? <laughs> is Denny's a prostitute? Is, asking the hard questions. It might as well be. <laughs> so he tries to zap him with the zapper, and it doesn't work because the extension cord back in the unplugged. room has come unplugged. Yeah. And at this point, Larry turns Larry full boy. boogie. Larry, Larry. I know that one. Larry too. turns That's full boogie. Go ahead. Larry turns full boogie. Yes. Transformation and complete. Transformation complete, and we yep. hate that. Yes, mm-hmm. and so um, they're try. Uh, Franny is trying to rescue uh, Darwin now, all by herself. Yeah, she while, cannot untie that sock sack. No. <laughs> while we have a just a rhyme off <laughs> between the two boogies. Yeah, yep. and Larry's not doing so well in the rhyme off. He is not. Franny remembers something about her Peter friend. Peter Pan or something. <laughs> And well, it's the like, boogeyman keeps calling her Franny. Yes. And only one person in her entire life has ever called That's her right. Franny. And so first she has uh, uh, Darwin begin to clap. And that causes Larry Boogie to turn back into Larry Houdini. That's right. So at story time, they were reading Peter That's Pan. That's right. That's what um, it was. And... When Tinkerbell, Take it from here, Aaron. when Tinkerbell is dying, I'm gonna try to listen. I'm still trying to process how Denny's is dry humping, and I don't like. It's so hard it for me right. to do that. 100. Yeah, while while we're doing this, because I'm just All right, like, you think about that. Yeah, I'll explain I'm, what I'm happened. getting through. Moons over my hammy and my pants. <laughs> <laughs> Moons over my hammy, new meaning, for sure. Um, for sure. You know, looking back on it, it's probably for the best that I did not make a drink for this episode. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, we yeah, would yeah, not yeah, yeah, yeah. have made it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Tell me about in, Peter in, Pan. in Peter Pan, when Tinkerbell is dying, uh, you have to clap to prove that you believe in fairies and Tinkerbell comes back to life. So <laughs> in order to get Larry to reverse the boogeyman Curse. process um he needs his imaginary friend to say that he still believes in him but the boogeyman has grabbed darwin and has a hand over his mouth so he can't speak so franny remembers the tinkerbell thing and yes. is like darwin clap. if you still believe yeah. clap and yes. so darwin's in the sock sack going and that's right that causes it, yeah. larry houdini to reverse reverse, reverse. Yeah, his boogeyman shell explodes <laughs> and right. he is so a cowboy now <laughs> larry houdini is trying to like keep boogie at bay psalm live yeah. and 
uh, Franny, because she's smart, is doing there science stuff. There happens to be a battery stuff. under yes. the bed, so she is taking a paper clip and yep, and is connect, doing connecting yeah, the plug. She's to creating the battery. electricity. Yeah. Yes. yes. And uh, it it works. Yep. <laughs> and causes when you zap, a I zap man. just like that. It uh, reverts back, and at this point, Franny has figured out who mm-hmm. the boogie this man boogeyman is. is. It is her old imaginary friend, Zoe. who she stopped believing in. That's right. When, when Darwin, Darwin, got, Darwin sick. got sick, and it is all about you know growing up too soon, mm-hmm. and you know yep. that and Zoe is an uppity a b who's yes. British. <laughs> she is. She is a, the Victorian. Yeah. She's got yes. Creatures. <laughs> the the vic- I will just say the vic- the once more into the breachers. The boogie man reverts back to a a uppity up be woman, and it and is. And Zoe yeah. does correct us <laughs> yes. that she is not a boogie man; she's a boogie, boogie person. Nineteen ninety nine. Ahead of its time. Ahead of its time. In so many ways. Ninety nine. How dare you gender that boogie man? Um, <laughs> And that's that's something you should take away from this. We should have been, should you been calling start, him the whole time. Yeah, still don't look under the bed, but yes. just know that when you do, boogie them. Maybe boogie ask them. the boogie person <laughs> yes. what they would like to be called. Yes. And so um, the uh, they get out from under the bed, and it's all good. It's all happy. Mm-hmm. And then we find out that um, the they are going to leave. So what happens is the boogie team. They come out from under the bed, and then the parents are like, "Hey, all those pranks that were happening here are happening in Centerville. Centerville, Centerville. yes. Um, So clearly, it's a wandering troop of pranksters. Franny, you're off the hook. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just they're out of town, just in and out, just like that. Whereas the two imaginary friends, like, we got to go stop more boogeymen. Yeah, apparently it's a it's a boogeyman situation in Centerville. Uh, We're gonna now that you found your childhood. Yeah. yeah, your childhood is now. Leaving. We're now deucing, Um because well, here's the thing: we're is, now going to form a boogeyman posse and yeah. go, dude. Boogeyman posse. I did see them live. Oh, your boogie, your your imaginary friend. At some point, you stop being able to see them. And but, is, that, is that before but or after be... your little brother's imaginary friend kisses you? Is That's that, right. Okay. When do you... So this movie ends. <laughs> she is saying goodbye to yeah, her imaginary she's friend Zoe. happy to have her imaginary friend back and That's Zoe's right. like, happy to be here. I am leaving. You I am will never right. see me again. And then Larry's and, like, hold on one second, baby girl. And Larry, <laughs> Larry kisses Fran. Yeah. And we are... In a we're romantic l- way. And a, it yeah. wasn't like a 100%. Bye. There's a full... It, there it is, is a walk up, look into your eyes, that's right. kiss. Kiss, yeah. and then they... See you later, baby girl. And then they, that's right. they disappear yeah. and into the sunset. And we're um, still wondering about why. Yeah. Darwin and Franny are talking. They're uh, falling asleep, and we see the boogie people watching them as they sleep. And then Not they, just watching them. No, the boogie people are in bed with them. They're in bed with them, mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Couldn't leave it at the kiss. Doesn't had to, end super had to strong. Down on, <laughs> but that is. Don't, don't look, look under the, the bed. bed. Yep. We'll be right back. We'll break this down a little bit more here on Decom Descendants. <laughs> Where were you, Aaron? God. I'm in the weeds. <laughs> Caesar's Sportsbook is the only sportsbook app with Caesar's rewards. That means win or lose, every bet brings you closer to the types of perks only Caesars can offer. Like hotel stays at over 50 iconic destinations, bonus bets, daily profit boosts, tickets to the game, dining, and so much more. Whether you're a new or existing customer, Caesars Sportsbook is always rewarding. Must be 21. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-BETS-OFF. Caesars Sportsbook. Don't just spectate, participate. Hey, it's me, your barista. You know how you come in almost every day for our cold foam coffee? Well, now there's an easy way to foam at home with new International Delight Cold Foam Creamer. And it's foaming delicious. New International Delight Cold Foam Creamer. Now in stores. It's foaming delicious. <laughs> Still trying to process that kid. If Hello, you're still everybody. listening to this on your commute, your commute is too long. It's too long. You have you drive too long. Get a new, uh, Jerry, get a new job, buddy. Get a new Jerry. job. <laughs> Uh, it's time for overtime. So we talk about how this movie aged over time. I do have some reviews from Letterboxd if you would like them. Uh, Robin gave this movie three and a half stars 
uh, for some reason, like literally no possible reason I can think of, the main character was named Francis Bacon. <laughs> <laughs> I need to know the backstory of it's this scientist. All the kids um, are named scientists. Max says uh, five, four stars. I want a remake with Lil Nas X as Larry. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> Not bad. Um, Hannah says three and a half stars. Everybody. You can't make a movie with only Dutch tilts. Don't look under the bed. Try and stop me. There are a lot of tilts in this movie. Yes. A a, a plethora. Uh, Lisa says two and a half stars. I miss when DCOMs were unhinged. Gone are the stories about not abandoning imaginary friends lest they manifest into the demonic spirit and eat your little brother who's uh <laughs> who's recently in remission from childhood cancer. <laughs> now they're all about following your dreams and whatever the F. <laughs> Allie says three. Out of ten that's my right favorite there. view. That's, yes. Uh, yep. Layla says five stars. The B in LGBTQ plus stands for boogeyman. <laughs> that's so great. Carrie says three stars. How do we add emotional <laughs> resonance to our boogeyman film? I don't know. A uh, uh, bone marrow transfusion plot. Sure, cut print. Uh, five stars from Emily who says more horror films should have uh, never mind that one doesn't make any sense uh, break does. dancing is there break dancing in this movie I, I think don't he think. dances at one point okay um, there's one that doesn't make sense that, that one because I don't remember oh. the break dancing oh okay and uh, what, three stars possibly one of the most unnecessary kisses in decom yeah. ever yeah yeah, yeah. But I'm not even mad about it because oh, I'm no, mad about because it. one more unnecessary. I don't. I don't. Because I, I, I can't no, it. this is what they say. No character in cinematic history has ever oozed more charisma than Larry Houdini. It's time to see what we thought of this movie and how it aged over time. Aaron, you and I, we've never seen it before. So it's it, this so is, this is a this is fre- a fresh slate for all of it, us. How has it aged? Oh, well, just looking at it back now, yeah. we're here. We are 99. This movie came out. What do you think about this movie? Yeah, I have, I have so many thoughts. Um, I went out to dinner with some friends last night, and if you think that I made them all discuss this movie with me, you're right. I did. <laughs> um, some of them haven't seen have it. They seen it? Yes. Okay, so, that's better. Yeah. Um, I was like, hey, have you guys ever seen To Look Under the Bed? And immediate reaction. So I was like, great, let's talk about What's it. What's up with that kiss, huh? Um, yeah. So let's start there because. Where else? There's just so many places to start. But the kiss, I didn't love that this man is like stalking her in the beginning of the movie, and she is thrilled. She's yeah. like, she's big, big into it. Like she's trying to explain when they're blaming her for the prank. She's like, no, it's Larry. He's this guy. He's been following me. <laughs> like, oh my god. No, that's not. Listen, we <laughs> talked about this last week with Genius. A, you don't owe men your time, and B, if they are stalking you. It's not it's romantic. No. It's not romantic. <laughs> Correct. That's not a sign of Mm-mm. no, 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 Don't no. Don't kink shame her, Aaron. Very mm. into Larry Houdini, who stalks her. I think that's a different thing. If she was, uh, <laughs> if she was twenty-two or twenty-three, brand that's maybe fair. a better argument. That's than fair. Thirteen. Yeah. Thirteen. Is that going to stop Larry Houdini from kissing her? No. no. Now, in reading about the movie, I found out that they almost did stop the kiss, but, but not, not because, because it was weird, no. yeah. but, you know, or stalking or the fact that it's not romantic in any way. We don't need a kiss. Um, they almost didn't have the kiss because they're an interracial couple. Oh, my god! So let's, again, not aging well over time in the last 24 hours or in the last but 20 years. But at least years. they did it. They did it. They did um, it. Yeah, they kept them kissing. But maybe they shouldn't. <laughs> yeah, so like, I don't know what side yeah. to be on. Right, right. Like, happy for the that, for the, kept the interracial kiss in for, in a 1999 children's movie, but also, like, I don't think we needed the kiss. <laughs> It's a weird line to be on. Um, yeah, so there's just, I mean, the fact that everyone thinks this 13-year-old girl is doing all these pranks, how? Someone explained yeah. it to me. There's there's no logic there at all. Um, the parents are mad that she somehow caused a citywide blackout, but not mad that she was up on the roof all night, alone, unsupervised, hanging Christmas lights. Like, there's just... I have some questions about the parents and their parenting ability. Um, I also question every imaginary friend turns into a boogeyman if you stop believing, but this is the first case of pranks 
that we've known about. It's almost about. like there's a lot plot wise that doesn't that hold up. I which mean, is true about all of these, but I think here yeah, there I is... I think that there is a really great plot in here somewhere about, you know, her coming to deal with her brother's cancer situation. Agreed. Even keep in, like, my boogeyman. Like, you know, keep in, like, that personal, like, here's my boogeyman. I pushed him, her away, them away <laughs> too soon, and now I need to refine my childhood but then at the end, when it becomes a boogeyman posse and every boogeyman in the world is doing pranks, like, I don't know. It, it, I just it's doing pranks. I think there was a really good plot here and we didn't get it. Hmm. So I know I like this movie, but also didn't like this movie. Fair. Fair. Brando? At this movie's best is as good as DCOMs can be. There's uh, a lot of uh, really, really yeah. good filmmaking choices mm-hmm. really cool a lot of uh, interesting like practical stuff and then uh it just gets bogged down there's a, it's doing a lot of things here um too many too many things in fact but i do agree i think the overarching uh lesson of don't grow up too fast is a is a good lesson. I don't know if I'm a kid and I'm watching this movie one if I'm ever going to be able to sleep again. It's a very like scary movie at times. But two, I don't know if I'm getting that lesson. I think it gets lost yes. in the ochres a little bit there. And so uh, there's a, there's a lot to like about this movie. And there's also a lot to scratch your head at and be like, why? Why did we decide to do this? And so uh, overall, good, uh, but and but very scary. Like surprised that this was on the Disney Channel because it's not like Halloween Town where it's all it's so it's also goofy. Like you see that yeah. the scary stuff, but it's like so over the top and goofy that it's like not scary. There's like to to what Dan brought up earlier, that scene where she's laying down in the hand, like yeah. it is some scary and stuff. We, we some didn't scary even talk stuff. about all the times where, where they're like when she's sleeping in her room and she has like dolls on shelves oh, and yeah. the, dolls, oh, yeah. the doll heads would be like some conjuring stuff. Yeah. And that scene where all and the it, kids are stationary is so unsettling. Like as a, as a kid, yeah. I would have just been like really creeped out by it. So and the thing is like, and I don't mind scary when I feel like there is a point to it. By the end of this movie, like the boogeyman, like he wasn't trying to hurt Franny. No. And, Why did he capture like there is Darwin. There's just like, no, there is so much that like, <laughs> what was his plan there? It's like, they were trying to make a movie about like your childhood and letting go of your childhood too soon. And then they hired a horror director and the movie just took on a, a different turn. And was the, was the, was the whole thing is I uh, will capture Darwin. Franny will come in here and then I'll just have Franny forever. Was that? I don't know because at one point the boogeyman does try to throw Darwin off the cliff. Yeah, what does that do? Does that wake him up? Does that does that kill him? Wake me up. Wake me up inside. Um. Yeah. No. I, I, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm just back. Yes. <laughs> I have a yeah. lot of questions about well, this movie. It's, it's just uh, trying and the to do too much. Of the boogie oh, person. Yeah. It just try to do so much. Try to do so much. Yeah. Dano. Right. Um. I think this movie at its best is the best decom. The problem is, is its best is about 45 minutes of movie. Mm-hmm. Um. When they, it, it, weirdly enough, the scene where they're re- having to remember their childhood and clapping and all that, that scene worked really well for me. The effectiveness of the horror in this movie works really well for me. Some of how it's shot works really, really well mm-hmm. for me. It has a cinematic quality to it. But as both of you guys have pointed out, as you go further and further into this movie, it doesn't hold up. Very similar to. Smart House, the other movie that is terrifying by the end, that also doesn't hold up. But you guys with that there's, one don't ask questions. You just go, it's Smart House. There's nothing scary about yeah. that movie. Oh, that movie's terrifying. Smart House. That movie at the end of the day is scarier than this movie. In, oh, it's wait a Smart minute, wait House. A minute. Time out. This movie is visually scarier than Smart House. But the ramifications of the plot, this movie, the guy's pranking you. Yes, it's scary, but he's just a prankster. Smart House is terrifying for a number of reasons. But it's very similar to me in a lot of ways because at its best, it works really well. At its worst, it's a mess of a movie that doesn't hold up under the foundation it's created. And so I had a hard time ranking it. I had a hard time ranking it. 
uh, but I like a lot of it. A lot of it I really, really enjoyed. So there's that for what it's worth. I will also, just two things to add. One, Eric Ty Hodges crushed in this yes. movie. Oh, yeah. yes. So yeah, yeah, yeah. hard. Uh, was great. That just and really to be went that young it. and to be that confident, like I'm going to go on this set, yeah. and I'm going to, and just I'm going to be unhinged and just go hard yeah. the whole time. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Two. The whole uh, something I just thought about, like the whole thing is like, don't look at the boogeyman, right? Like, put the covers over the over. Well, your if head. you're in bed and you have the covers over your head, the boogeyman can't, can't touch you. you. Yeah. Yes. Which I stand by those rules to this yeah. day. Okay. Fair. But like, poor, poor, uh, poor I Darwin. Have to sleep with a blanket. Poor Darwin was just hanging out, and he didn't even get a chance. He just no. took him right under by right. his foot. It's brutal. It's brutal it's out there. Don't dung, don't do the feet dangling. Don't look under the bed. Yeah, he didn't. I I do wish that like almost like Disney had made two separate movies. Like I would be here for an actual horror movie with the boogeyman, but maybe don't tie that up with coming to terms with like childhood cancer yeah, they, like, they did, yeah. i didn't well, no, no no i didn't mind the bone marrow subplot of this movie my no, problem that. was the the stalking romance part and the the lack of coherent plot of how many boogeymen are there how have we, this is the first we heard of it the pranks like why is he pranking like some of the motivations of the boogeyman didn't make sense to me, mm-hmm. and the stalking was yeah, weird. No, so I want a movie where the boogeyman That's is right. like the bad guy. There is scary. no redemption. Yes. We defeat the boogeyman at the end. Case closed. Yeah. And, and, and then maybe a movie yes. about childhood cancer this, where there's a redemption arc. Yeah, this boogeyman being created because you lost your childhood essence is a great idea. It's a great mm-hmm. idea yes. for a movie. Yes. But it gets the, the waters get muddied. That's where I am. It's time to make the list. Um... I, tough, I only have 11. Yeah, it's 11. I okay. was wrong. Okay. I great. counted again. I went a little, went a I was little wrong. nutty here. Um, all right. Well, top Dan, 10. Dan and I recorded an episode of that show, apparently. Yeah, 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 top yeah. 10. <laughs> top 10. One goes away. Of, I think it's clear. Which one? <laughs> yep. For Dan and Under I, wraps. it is very clear. I think for um, everyone listening, uh, Aaron, it should be clear. Aaron, do you have, it? Do you have your list made? Because I can go. I have it. No, I I have okay. it. I don't love it. I don't love mine either. But um, here we are. Because right now my list is still like the order in which I would rather watch these movies, yeah. and not necessarily what I think is a better movie. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. I think with these, a lot of mine they're the same on that, but that's the that's the age old like that's the yeah. Ultimate question. So I mean, it's like. I think there is a really good movie here, but it's not my number one decom because it's, I'm not going to choose to watch this over smart house. Um, <laughs> spoiler. Uh, so where are we? We have 11. Okay. Yeah. All but one. Okay. So for me, 10 is 13th Under- year. <laughs> what? 13th year. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> You're wrong. <laughs> uh, number nine under wraps, uh, eight can of worms, then we got Brink, Genius. Ooh, seven. Brink at seven, Bran. Don't Look Under the Bed at five. <laughs> then we have Xenon, Halloween Town, Smart House, Johnny Tsunami, who's the best human being in the entire world. Johnny Tsunami? Oh, yeah. Uh, I've got You Lucky Dog at You're 10. Right. Boo. Might be the Boo. last week. Boo. Might be the last week. The fact that you say might, I hate that. <laughs> I don't know, man. The movie sucks. I don't know, man. Can of Worms at nine. Thirteenth year at eight. Xenon seven, Genius six, Don't Look Under the Bed five, Halloween Town four, Johnny Tsunami <laughs> three, Smart House two, Smart House over Johnny Tsunami. You, you, you. Brink, the greatest movie of all time, number one. Dan, <sighs> our lists are starting to all like go to the go their separate <laughs> ways. Brink is not I still can't. Brink is iconic, but no, it's a no. It's a no for me, dog. On that, uh, number, number ten. One. 13th year, number mm-hmm. nine, under wraps, number eight, can of worms, number seven, smart house, <laughs> smart house, smart I house. I need to say no more, right? Smart, house. smart house. house, right? <laughs> number six, don't look under the bed, number five, xenon, number four, brink, number three, genius, number two, Halloween town. Number one, going away, Johnny Tsunami. Johnny Tsunami. Johnny Tsunami. Correct. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Well, we did, everybody. Congratulations. Uh, We'll be back next week. We've got Horse Sense. Yep. Horse 
since. Lawrence Brothers. Yes. Making their appearance. And I have seen this movie. Yes. uh, But I don't. I'm not super familiar with it. I'm very familiar with it. Well, it's Lawrence Brothers. So I, there's a, listen, there's nothing you can do. The also, Lord. it was Lawrence Brothers on like a ranch. Yeah. Oh, and man. Now, <laughs> as a child, there was nothing I wanted more than to live on a ranch. I was like, really? I can ride horses whenever I want. Wow. As an adult, I realized that that's not Terrible. how a ranch works. Um, yep. You have to work. And at the ranch, you got hail bales to kill. Hail bales? Up. You got hail, <laughs> hail, hail bales. Oh, hail. Okay, hold on, hold Sock on, hold sack. on. You've got. <laughs> Hay bales. You got it, to buddy. Cover. You got it. Hey, bone marrow you got hail transfer. <laughs> you want this? Tra- it's transfer. It's a, you, it's a here you go. I'll trade you two, yeah, uh, two. Pikachu's for some bone could, marrow. You got, you're a Venmo. I'll it's, Venmo you some bone, some bone marrow. marrow. <laughs> um, yeah. No, I I uh, loved riding horses. I still do. Um, but I was like, yeah, if I live on a ranch, I can just do nothing all day except ride horses. And then the Lawrence brothers were like, yeah, we live on a ranch. Um, and I was like, great, sign me up. Fair enough. Can't we'll, wait. we'll do that next week. Uh, until then. DCOM. 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 Oh, what do we do? Go watch. Keep watching DCOM. Mickey. <laughs> Smuggers request live. Snag a, snag Smart a, house. Snag a mouse. <laughs> what? I don't know. <laughs> snag a mouse. Decom Descendants is a Bramble Jam podcast. It's produced by Brandon Gray. For more information on Decom Descendants, you can go to decompodcast.com. You can also go to at Decom Descendants. Descendants on the socials. For more information on how to watch us watch the movies live, you can go to bramblejamplus.com. You're about to hear some ads that help keep the lights on here in the old studio. Thanks for listening or don't listen. It's really up to you at this point. It's at the end of the show. I mean, you're listening to me. Hi, but here they come. I promise they're coming. Yep. Here they are. Happy day. Caesars Sportsbook is the only sportsbook app with Caesars rewards. That means win or lose, every bet brings you closer to the types of perks only Caesars can offer. Like hotel stays at over 50 iconic destinations, bonus bets, daily profit boosts, tickets to the game, dining, and so much more. Whether you're a new or existing customer, Caesars Sportsbook is always rewarding. Must be 21. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-BETS-OFF. Caesars Sportsbook. Don't just spectate, participate. Hey, it's me, your barista. You know how you come in almost every day for our cold foam coffee? Well, now there's an easy way to foam at home with new International Delight Cold Foam Creamer. And it's foaming delicious. New International Delight Cold Foam Creamer. Now in stores. It's foaming delicious. Caesars Sportsbook is the only sportsbook app with Caesars rewards. That means win or lose, every bet brings you closer to the types of perks only Caesars can offer. Like hotel stays at over 50 iconic destinations, bonus bets, daily profit boosts, tickets to the game, dining, and so much more. Whether you're a new or existing customer, Caesars Sportsbook is always rewarding. Must be 21. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-BETS-OFF. Caesars Sportsbook. Don't just spectate, participate. Hey, it's me, your barista. So you know how you come in almost every day for our cold foam coffee? Yeah, well, I might be putting myself out of a job by telling you this, but now there's an easy way to foam at home with new International Delight Cold Foam Creamer. With three new foaming flavors, French vanilla, sweet and creamy, and caramel macchiato, who could blame you if you stopped coming in altogether? Yeah, it's that foaming delicious. You're welcome. New International Delight Cold Foam Creamer, now in stores. It's foaming delicious. Caesars Sportsbook is the only sportsbook app with Caesars rewards. 
That means win or lose, every bet brings you closer to the types of perks only Caesars can offer, like hotel stays at over 50 iconic destinations, bonus bets, daily profit boosts, tickets to the game, dining, and so much more. Whether you're a new or existing customer, Caesars Sportsbook is always rewarding. Must be 21. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-BETS-OFF. Caesars Sportsbook. Don't just spectate, participate. Psst. Hey, it's me, your barista. So you know how you come in almost every day for our cold foam coffee? Yeah, well, I might be putting myself out of a job by telling you this, but now there's an easy way to foam at home with new International Delight Cold Foam Creamer. With three new foaming flavors, French vanilla, sweet and creamy, and caramel macchiato, who could blame you if you stopped coming in altogether? Yeah, it's that foaming delicious. You're welcome. New International Delight Cold Foam Creamer, now in stores. It's foaming delicious. Caesars Sportsbook is the only sportsbook app with Caesars rewards. That means win or lose, every bet brings you closer to the types of perks only Caesars can offer. Like hotel stays at over 50 iconic destinations, bonus bets, daily profit boosts, tickets to the game, dining, and so much more. Whether you're a new or existing customer, Caesars Sportsbook is always rewarding. Must be 21. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-BETS-OFF. Caesars Sportsbook. Don't just spectate, participate. Psst. Hey, it's me, your barista. So you know how you come in almost every day for our cold foam coffee? Yeah, well, I might be putting myself out of a job by telling you this, but now there's an easy way to foam at home with new International Delight Cold Foam Creamer. With three new foaming flavors, French vanilla, sweet and creamy, and caramel macchiato, who could blame you if you stopped coming in altogether? Yeah, it's that foaming delicious. You're welcome. New International Delight Cold Foam Creamer, now in stores. It's foaming delicious.